Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. But this one we are going to head back to Germany and we're going back to the northern part of Bavaria and revisiting Franconia, which as I've told you many, many a time is one of the most famous beer regions in the world. And we're going to go to probably the most well-known city in that area, which is of course Bamberg. And we're going to the oldest of the Bamberg breweries today. So for this one, we're going to return to Klosterboy Bamberg and we're having a taste of their Bamberger Bock beer. So this one comes in at 6.9% and you know as the name suggests this is one of these Bock beers which is released kind of around uh, the uh, October, November sort of time in um, in Germany and you know it's these beers are a little bit stronger, kind of the winter warmers I guess a little bit but they are very very nice. In this video I want to give a special shout out to Sabine at Klosterball in Bamberg. I reviewed the brown beer for you when I was visiting Daniel down there. Big shout out to Daniel as well of course course but they saw the video and they sent me a really nice box with two of these glasses also one of the kind of clay colored um, stein mugs that you get in Germany and two of each of the four different beers that they do so I thought that was very very cool and uh, you know it's really cool to see that one of the family run companies would do something like that for a beer reviewer so huge thank you to the guys at Close to Boy in Bamberg and I hope you guys enjoy the um, the next it's going to be another three videos you'll see from them or three including this one I should say so so yeah, as I say, really looking forward to having a go at this one and seeing how this beer turns out. This one had just hadn't quite been released when I was in Bamberg last time, but the brown beer was the one that Daniel told me was a little bit more unusual. So yeah, this guy, as I mentioned, 6.9% bock beer, and it should be uh, really quite nice. Quite a drink, an easy drinking, slightly heavier beer, this one. So yeah, anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Close Up Roy Bamberg before like I said you will see another two reviews after this fairly soon there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Close to Boy Bamberg then. So this, as I mentioned to you earlier, is apparently the oldest of the breweries in the city of Bamberg and it can be found on the Mullenwehrtel. If you just go a little bit to the south of the old um, Rathaus, if you like, in Bamberg, just go a little bit, go across the river through the house and then just follow the the kind of um, the western bank of the river down you will eventually come to uh, to Klosterboy and it's one of the I didn't actually get the chance to visit it when I was there so that's something that I will do the next time I go to Bamberg which shouldn't be too far in the future I would think but the first mention of this brewery in documents comes from the year 1333 but the official establishment of the brewery came 200 years later in 1533 with the formation of the first Bischof of Brambia Brown Beer House, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but basically the Archbishop's Brown Beer House, if you want to translate it into English. But the brewery remained in the ownership of the first bishop, the Archbishop, until 1790, and then during this period there were 21 bishops who governed the Bishop Dunn of Bamberg, and some of them were very in very, very prominent families, such as the uh, as Schenk von Stauffenberg, Schönborn, Sensheim, and also Ertal. These are very, very well known family names around that kind of Franconia region. But from 1790, until 1851 the brewery moved between several private owners and it was purchased then by Peter Brown who was the son of a pharmacist and from Kitzingen and then it began to pass down the generations of his family. Matthias took over in 1883, Hans in 1911, Matthias again in 1963 and then in 1968 it passed to Anne Rose Brown Schluder and it was run by her and her husband and in 2017 the brewery was sold to the Werner family who had a long association with brewing and the annual out Output of this brewery is 4,000 hectolitres, and the current brewmaster is Christian Valder. So, yeah, a brewery that passed down a lot of fat, um, basically a good few generations of, um, of a family, and it's just been sold to another family who have quite a prominent brewing connection. And that's one of the things I've always told you is very, very cool about these, um, these little German breweries. One of the things you really notice about Germany is the prominence of the small family business, and that's something that makes their economy as strong as it is, I think. You do see this in places 
places like Japan and uh, that not so much in Eastern Europe right enough because of the uh, Eastern and Central Europe because of the communism and things that was there but these family run breweries are very very common in Germany and it's, they're very very interesting operations um, and I, I think that's one of the really really cool things about Bamberg and the Franconia region in particular so yeah if you get the chance to try some of these Bamberg beers I highly recommend that you do it's a beautiful beautiful city they've got a culture of eating out and, uh, and drinking beers and things like that so it's somewhere I would highly highly recommend that you visit I always enjoy my visits there and I'm quite jealous of Daniel that he gets to, to stay there all the time basically but um, yeah let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself I can get rid of my brewery notes now and we can have a taste of this beer so yeah you can see the lovely glass that Sabine sent me you can see obviously this brewery is one that has quite a heavy monastic connection uh, basically starting off as the Archbishop's uh, brewery this one but yeah she sent me as I say two of these glasses these are the same shape as the Schlenkerla ones probably a lot of you that are watching the channel have seen the most famous beer from Bamberg of course is Schlenkerla but this glass is the same shape as the ones that they use at, um, at Schlenkerla she sent me two of these and also one of the, um, the sort of clay kind of coloured uh, stein mugs that you get but of course we'll use this one for reviewing since uh, you need to see the colour of the beer but yeah again the artwork on this one is fairly similar to the brown beer that you saw before each of the beers that they have is just kind of a different colour within this round all and you can see there is the little brew house there on the front. If you go on the brewery website of course you can see the photos of these and um, the symbol that is on the glass of course is on the little top sticker there, I'm just making sure you're seeing that on the camera there you can see the bishop enjoying a beer and um, yeah you can see that on the little top label as well, I love these little top labels that you get on the traditional German beers but as I said it's 6.9% bock beer this one and it's brewed and um, they released this in at the middle of October so I think trying to think when I was there, this one hadn't quite been released I think when I was uh, was over there and reviewing the brown beer but again it was the brown beer I was told by Daniel was very unusual and I wanted to do one beer from each of these uh, these different brews although I had reviewed all of the Schlenkerla ones but yeah um, nice looking beer this one so without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on to the tasting then as you can see nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass it's kind of cool to be able to drink this in its intended glass. We'll just make sure we don't get too big ahead on this one because it will, as I say, it did travel in the mail so we don't want it to go kind of too crazy. Of course in German beer you do want a head on it but you don't want it to go too crazy and as you open up this beer one of the things I've always found about these um, kind of October Bock beers is they always have a really nice kind of biscuity uh, aroma to them. They've, they're always just a little bit more malty, if you like. The bot beer is always a little bit more malty and heavier in alcohol and um, but at the same time you, with these ones, th these uh, October bot beers, you usually get a nice sort of, you still get a nice kind of drinkability to it. They've always still got a little bit of this kind of Helles Dunkel type drinkability to them, which I always like, and they always have the German Brauhaus smoothness, as I call it. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely kind of, it's quite a deep amber kind of colour, this one. It's, um, you know, it's a sort of, I would say it's a nice kind of, it's medium, I'm saying it's a rich amber, but I would say this is quite a medium amber one. It reminds me a little bit, I think when you compare this to the Czech beers, of course, you've got the Letzaks and the Svetlis, and I think this one is kind of more along the lines of a Letzak, you know, it's kind of that middle sort of amber colour. The, of course, you can get the Hellas and the Pills and things like that, which is a lot more of a kind of brighter golden straw. This one is a little bit more of a slightly kind of caramelly sort of amber colour, this one. But yeah, look at the nice carbonation in that as well. This glass... I think it's just absolutely beautiful. You can see there's a solid two fingers. There's a bit more of that of a frothy, I would say slightly cream coloured head. This one, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But in terms of appearance, this one doesn't really have anything overly surprising when you consider the style of beer that this is. But yeah, it looks very, very nice, pretty much as you would expect from one of these bot beers or Franconian or Frankish bot beers, I guess you could say. But yeah, lovely looking beer, crystal clear as you can see. Let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Yeah. So again, you've got that typical nice bready malt base to this one. I'm guessing it'll be Viaman malts that they've used in this, the local Bamberg company, really very famous malt company actually. Um, but yeah, 
but this one it's got that nice typical white brady brown base to it there's a little touch of graininess in there i would say it's almost got a little bit of a brown brady quality to it as well the german bakers of course are some of the best in the world i always love my uh, my german bread but we've got fairly good bread here in sweden as well but yeah lovely kind of slightly german brown bread it's almost got a little bit of that kind of bread crusty kind of quality to it in the aroma as well definitely a nice little bit of brown sugar a kind of toasty um caramel note coming out of this one but more I'd say it more leans towards the biscuity side of things. I think I should correct myself there and say this one leans a little bit more towards the, the biscuity side of things rather than being a kind of full-on caramel. It reminds me a little bit of the McVitie's Digestives and I know that people in Bamberg would be kind of familiar with that because you do get the... Um, you can get those in Germany, of course, but you get... A lot of them used to eat these kind of things from the... They used to get them from the military bases, the American and British military base shops. They used to get these little biscuits. But yeah, the aroma in this one really reminds me of a nice kind of um, McVitie's digestive biscuit, but it's got a nice kind of bready base to it as well. On top of that, you get these typical German noble hop elements. It's got a lovely kind of very slight earthiness to it. But at the same time, as I always tell you, these German noble hops have a little bit of that slightly sweeter um, earthiness to them. There's a good little bit of floral character to this one, some nice lighter grassy notes and just a little touch of that almost lemony um, citrusy note that you get from the, the kind of grassy hops as well. So just keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're having a taste of this beer. But yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you get stuck in. But I really want to try this one. You know, th this would be the sin in Germany. The head is starting to go down. So, you know, I should have tasted this beer a little bit earlier. But yeah, thank you once again to Sabine for sending me this beer. And we'll have a go at this now. This is the Bamberger Bock beer from Close to Boy Bamberg. Uh, and again, thank you to the guys for sending me this. Slanja, Skull, Prost. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I've managed to get this one just at the right temperature as well. It's about the same, um, it's pretty much the same level actually, the same temperature that you would get this uh, from the tap in the brewery, I'm sure. Because the German beers, yeah, they are chilled, but they're not the kind of ice cold thing that the Americans like. They are just to this level, you know, I would say it's probably around... Um, Try to think it's usually about three, four, uh, you know, four degrees, something like that. Just kind of slightly refrigerated. Although I have seen that they they do serve these. At um, you know, that they will sometimes they will serve these just at keller temperature, which I think is maybe around eight or nine degrees actually. But this one, the way I've got it just now, it does have just a nice little bit of that chill to it. But yeah, first thing you're going to notice about this beer, and um, the grainy notes that I was picking up in the, the malt base for me are a little bit more prominent than I was expecting. So first off for this beer, um, it has that, what I call the brow house smoothness to it. It's got a really nice kind of, um, it just the smoothness of this one just goes right across the middle of your palate and blankets the tongue. The further into the aftertaste you go, you start to get a little bit more of uh, that kind of graininess just pushing its way out. There is a little touch of an almost slightly spicy character to this one just because, just from some of the graininess that's in there. And that's something I've noticed that is a little bit more prominent in the monastic beers, if you like, that you get in Germany. As I say, this brewery has a big, um, you know, the close to blow eyes often have a little bit of this slightly spicy character to them in Germany. It's very different from the, the Belgian monastic beers, of course, and Belgian beer generally is more yeast-focused rather than anything else. But yeah, definitely a nice little bit of a, a kind of grainy note to this one. The bready qualities that you get out of this beer, again, it's quite a, a sort of brown bready quality, I would say. And at the same time, that sort of little touch of um, sp almost spiciness that you get, it reminds me a little bit of a... Um, it reminds me a little bit of a, that a kind of almost like a little bit like a well-fired bread crust, um, but not quite blackened. If that makes sense, I think that's a good way to describe this one. That little grainy quality that comes out the further into the aftertaste you go, it's just like a kind of slightly toasty um, bread crust. Yeah, in the very centre of your palate. There's a nice little bit of a sweet 
Um, it's not quite caramel. Again, I would say this is more biscuity. It's more like a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit. In the middle of your palate, you do get a little bit of that sweetness in there. And the further out that you go from the, the centre of your palate, it just becomes gradually more and more grainy. Um, and the malt base, is a, you can feel a little touch of the booziness in this one. You can pick that up, that this is a slightly higher alcohol beer. It is 6.9%. Most German beers um, are sort of between 4.5 and uh, around the 5% mark. They don't usually fit into that window. Some of them can creep up to about 5.2, 5.3. In my experience, and of course we're talking about Ellis Dunkels and things, not the likes of the Doppelbox and stuff like this. But yeah, this one, it's it's got that typical drinkability to it, but you can just tell it's a little bit um, heavier in alcohol. But of course you get the Bob Beer at this uh, in the kind of October, November time of the year, and they all go out and actually drink these beers when they're tapped, which is very, very cool. Um, it seems to be you know, a very, very big thing in the Franconia region. On the hoppy side of this beer, in the back corners of the palate, you get a nice little bit of that earthiness there, that typical noble hoppy earthiness. As you come further forward, it just kind of smooths out a little bit. When you get to the front corners of the tongue, there's a little bit of a slightly floral, aromatic character to this one. Then round the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more grassy. And behind the front curve of the tongue, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. For me on the fruity side of things, this one, it has that typical grassy, almost very slightly lemony citrus to it, but there's something else in here as well. Yeah, there's almost a little bit of a kind of... Um, it's got a little touch of a kind of orchardy fruit thing to it. You know, there is a little bit of a kind of peary, appley thing. That's quite mild. It's almost coming out just on the very tip of the tongue. And there's almost a little tiny, tiny hint of a slightly... Um, it, it's like a very, 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 very mild kind of slightly candied fruit. Strawberry or something like that. It's just, there's a little, there's something in my mind that's telling me there's a little touch of red fruit on the tongue of this beer, but the main fruity side of this beer, I think, is that grassy, um, you know, that typical grassy sweetness that you'll get from uh, from these German noble hopped beers, and also a, a sort of peary apple ester in there too. But again, very, very nice beer, this one. If you like these German traditional beers, you are going to enjoy this one. To me, in comparison with some of the other bot beers that I've had, the malt base in this one just has a little touch more of a kind of slightly spicy, grainy quality to it. But this is something that I found is a little bit more common in these breweries that have the monastic connection. There does seem to be... Um, a little bit of that kind of more spicy grainy quality in the beers that they produce but this is nice and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again uh, the brown beer I think as well is a is, is a very interesting one the other two beers that they sent me was the Schwarzla which I think is a Schwarz beer and uh, they also sent me the Keller beer as well I've not reviewed a Keller beer in a long time so quite looking forward to having a taste of that one but this has been a very cool one to review as the first of the reviews of the beers that Sabine sent me and I hope you guys have kind of enjoyed my take on the flavour profile of this beer. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one you know um, mid-bodied beer carbonation is very smooth to me this one has quite an oily mouthfeel in comparison with a lot of the German beers, this one I think I find this a little bit more um, oily than other things. You do get a little touch of boozy warmth from this one. You can feel that a little bit in the mouth. Um, good little bit of hoppy bitterness. I would guess it's somewhere around you know the sort of thirty-ish, maybe not. Quite, I don't think it's quite forty. I think it's sort of around the thirty-ish IBU mark. There's a little bit of. Uh, almost bitter spicy quality from the malt base as well. Good little bit of sweetness to balance it out though, and there's a little touch. Of a juicy kind of fruity ester as well but overall very very nice beer this one a slightly spicier uh, bulk beer compared to some of the other ones that i've had but i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so let's leave it at that for this one i think i've rambled on enough about this beer so this one is the bamberger bulk beer from close to Poy bamberg and it's you know it is a very very nice example of uh, the franconian bulk beer so yeah have a go at this one for yourself and just see what you think but if you want this one you will have to go to bamberg around the kind of mid october november sort of time so yeah let's leave it at that thank you again to sabine for getting this beer to me once again
again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from close to Boy Bamberg. And I'm sure I'll be back there to visit Daniel at some point in the, the fairly near future. And you will definitely see more Bamberg beer reviews in the future on the channel. But thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys later. Until the next time, stand you just now. Check out all my social media and have a go at some of these band beers. If you get the chance to visit Germany, Bamberg is your kind of one of must go destinations. Slange just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slange, Skull, Proust, have a go at some of these close to the Bamberg beers. Cheers.